Uh, next, I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Rulon Gardner, 2011 Alan Gloria Greco-Roman Hall of Champions inductee. And here's a gentleman that I worked with before, and we had a great time. I always kid him. I always say that Rulon never learned how to swim because you have to eat an hour after you eat. But he's a... <laughs> He's such a good guy, and, <laughs> and a classy sense of humor. Have a great time. He's the one. He's the most successful Greco-Roman wrestler in American history. He did the unthinkable at the 2000 Olympics in Sydney, Australia, when he defeated 12-time world and Olympic champion Alexander Karolin from Russia. That was in the finals. Think about the magnitude of this accomplishment, really. Carolyn won the Olympics three times and had nine world titles, and he'll go down in history as not only one of the greatest wrestlers ever, and perhaps the most successful Olympian, really, when they're considering all sports. Gardner won a world championship in 2001 and was a bronze medalist at the 2004 Olympics. He carried the American flag in the closing ceremonies of the Sydney Olympics, an honor reserved for the biggest star of the games. He's overcome all obstacles, he learned about hard work growing up on a dairy farm in Wyoming. High school state champion, he wrestled at Ricks College in Idaho, where he won a junior college national title. He was an All-American at the University of Nebraska. He wrestled internationally for 10 years, and he didn't let a snowmobile mishap that cost him a toe slow him down. He has survived a motorcycle accident and an airplane crashing into the water. Gardner joined the class of 2000 in this elite hall. The inaugural class included, 2009, correction, in this elite hall because the inaugural class included Olympic champion Steve Frazier, Jeff Watnick, world champions Mike Hunt, Dennis Hall, and Joe Warren. Please welcome our 2011 inductee into the Allen and Gloria Rice Greco-Roman Hall of Champions, Rulon Gardner. <laughs> Uh, Don um, Vuchenga, by the way. Um, he's a Polish bum. That's why I think of Don Rickles. I mean, uh, yeah, um, our friend over here. But uh, thank you very much. It's uh, it's an honor to be here in front of so many great wrestlers. And for me, oh, man, you know, I'm still at awe how just how lucky I am to to just be involved in this great sport and to have so many great people that have given me guidance and leadership and it all started from my my brothers and sisters I had nine kids nothing like uh, you know the family of the Morgans wow you know you, you know you guys just deserve a hand of applause just for being such a great family and a leader in the community and the sporting community of wrestling you know I just like to give you guys one more hand you know people always talked about you know Greco-Roman wrestling when I first got involved and the Morgan family, it was, you know, it was a dynasty, you know, to have that many great wrestlers and just to be that strong and to have that big of a foundation. And for me to, to be involved, you know, my family, you know, helped me from day one. I had, you know, the brothers and sisters. I lost a brother back when I was eight years old. That same year, our family barn burnt down. And it was the coldest year in Wyoming history, negative 77 below zero. And my family continued to milk the cows outside. You know, the milkers would freeze up. But my family had heart, we had character, and we rebuilt the barn, we came back, and as I started schooling, I had a learning disability. I struggled in school, nothing was easy, you know, I had reading comprehension, basically cognitive ability to understand, and I had people would tease me and make fun of me. And the one thing about it, when somebody questioned me and somebody, you know, called me out as a person, it made me realize and turn that energy inside myself. And so, for me, I got a, a very strong you know, I think, you know, core, and I have a very strong subconscious, and for me to be able to focus and continue to push, you know, myself every day, not just in, in wrestling, and that was almost the easy part, but in life to keep believing in myself, and, you know, when I went and graduated high school, I told the advisor I want to go to college, and I want to be a teacher to give back to all those students that, 
you know, these teachers gave me. And I want to be able to, to give back. And the teacher and the advisor said, Ruin, you don't have what it takes. You'll fail. You know, go to a technical school. Go do something where it's easy. Because that's all you know. And I went home. My mom said, Ruin, don't listen to him. You know, my mom went back to nursing school when she was 50 years old. And, you know, taught me that you can do anything. And you can accomplish any goal. And when I went to college, you know, I went and spent two years there. And it was okay. I wasn't great. And... The knowledge I gained in college was probably due because of one of my brothers, and his name was Reynold. He was a year older than me, and all the way through high school until my senior year, my brother used to beat me, and he used to tease me, you'll never beat me, you'll be second best, and my brother, you know, was a person that pushed me every day, and we weren't very good wrestlers, but what it taught us was is a commitment. When you go out there and you dedicate yourself to something, you know, and myself, you know, for me, it wasn't winning today. But eventually, through perseverance, I could do it. And I had a teacher who told me something. He said, if you go to school every day and you give 100% in everything that you do in life, you will be successful. And I'm like, wow, what a success. And for me, success, I had no clue what it was. But every day I went to school, I never missed one class, I never missed one practice, because I'd fall short of what I wanted to do in the classroom or on the mat. And so when I got the opportunity to go to the University of Nebraska, I was astonished. I went there and they said, Ruin, you know, the physical education degree at Nebraska is the fourth hardest degree. You can't do it. But I had support. And Tim Newman, the head wrestling coach in Nebraska, said, Ruin, they don't believe you, but I know you can. And I went, I spent two years there and I wrestled. And I went into my senior year and I got the opportunity. The only loss I had at my time in Nebraska, those two years, was to Billy Pierce. And I lost to Billy, Billy Bob, that's what I called him, but <laughs> lost to Billy and I was mad and I actually was sick before the match and we actually beat Minnesota and I'm watching Jay go out there and they did like an hour of work, just an hour of sprints after that loss. And I'm like, wow, you know, you know, that's a great coach, that's a great team, you know, talk about leadership, talk about commitment, talk about, you know, perseverance and that was the opportunity I had first time to meet Billy and I'm like, wow, you know, who are these Minnesota, you know, guys, you know, and we had Corey Olson that wrestled in Nebraska with us and, you know, two-time, uh, you know, second place runner-up and I'm like, wow, you know, what's this Minnesota? And Tim Newman was like, well, that's where I go to get all my good wrestlers. And so, you know, it was true. And as I got the opportunity, I fell short of my desire to be an NCAA champion. And I think of all the NCAA champions, like, wow, you know, how lucky are you to be able to, to be a champion? And that determination I didn't be able to accomplish that night, you know, drove me to get done with my eligibility and, you know, I spent two more years to get my college degree. I spent six and a half years to get my diploma and that meant something. But when I graduated, you know, I actually made a commitment and I moved to Colorado Springs and I started to train and I started to believe and I had people around me that, that helped me to believe in myself. And I got a phone call my uh, senior year of college and where's Mike at? Right there, Mike called me up and I was working at a golf course in Afton, Wyoming. Just got done, I'm having a great time. He says, hey, I want you to come out to the Olympic Festival in San Antonio, Texas. And he tracked me down at work. And I'm like, well, I don't need, I don't know anything about Greco-Roman. And he said, really? He said, you'd be good at it. I'm like, really? I'm like, I'm like, why do you say that? He's like, because you, you work hard. You know, what else did you say? You remember? I just loved how aggressive you were. like you just loved how aggressive I was. And I had no clue what Greco-Roman was. You know, I remember watching a little bit of the 1992 Olympics, uh, and I got to see a little bit of Greco-Roman, and I had no idea. And he invited me to come out, and I'm thinking, well, do I just take it easy and work at the golf course and enjoy my summer, or do I, do I see what's out there? And I said, you know what? Here's a coach who has the tenacity to call me up and offer me an opportunity to go to San Antonio, Texas. I'm like, sure. So I go down, I show up, and I never wrestled uh, Greco-Roman before, and I ended up winning the Olympic Festival. I beat Tim T. Couts, you know, in the finals of uh, the festival. And I remember uh, there's a quote, and Mike said, you know, Ruben Gardner could be, you know, one of the, one or the best Greco-Roman wrestler ever. And a bunch of the wrestlers saw that, and they were furious <laughs> that he would say something like that when it was my only my first tournament. And I remember, wow believes in me, well, you know, what an opportunity. So, you know, I saw that and I'm like, wow, what am I going to do? And I still had two more years of, of college to finish up. And so I dabbled a little bit more in Greco-Roman, but I didn't really have the time. But 
I continued to, to see myself after my education was done, and I finally got my degree, and I looked at it, and I thought, what am I going to do? And I said, move to Colorado Springs, and I'm going to start training. And that's when things kind of got interesting. Uh, you know, I got the opportunity to meet Dan, and I'm thinking, wow, you know what? The true professor, I think, of Greco-Roman wrestling, you know, Dan Chandler, and a person that I first met him with, Billy. And how many, everybody know Billy in here? Holy freak, is a is Billy here? No. I'm glad he's not here because he would torture me today. He was the strongest, he had the driest skin because once he'd grab you, you could not move. And so it was at least four to five minutes before I would even do a move on him because until then I was, you know, he would headlock me, he could throw me in, in 20 different directions. And he was a stud. And, you know, seeing him and Chandler working together, I was pissed. I'm like, ooh. I'm like, you know, I got to go over and get in the middle of that because I got to start learning what's going on, how Chandler is teaching these great wrestlers. And so I got to know Chandler a little bit, and I had the opportunity to come here to, to campus in 1997. And I wrestled Billy in the finals. McAfari won the silver medal in the 1996 Olympics, and he took a year off. So I wrestled um, Billy in the finals here, and I went out there, and I beat him out of two out of three uh, matches, and he hit me in a headlock in that match. And I left campus like this. And I, my neck was so bad. It was the hardest throw I've ever had. And I know that all 600 pounds of us landed on my neck when he threw me. And, you know, I learned, like, wow, you know. So I had the, you know, admiration for Billy. And I think for Billy, thank God he, you know, he didn't accomplish his goal because it gave me the opportunity. Because, you know, truly, as an athlete, you know, I don't know if I was that much more gifted or skilled, but I found a way to win. And, you know, you see these athletes nowadays and the World Championship uh, Greco-Roman team just came back and they fell short and they this and that and the other. You know what? It, it comes down to commitment. It comes down to not talking, but doing. And, you know, committing themselves to, you know, what their, their job was. And I think, you know, in the sport of wrestling, you know, you can't just go out there and ask or, or hope to be good. You know, you have to commit everything you have. And as I got better and, and I finally got the opportunity to make the 2000 Olympic team, you know, I finally beat Matt Kafari, I, I beat Byers, I, you know, I beat Billy. I finally got an opportunity to beat all those people. And I'm like, wow, I'm, I'm truly blessed. And then I also realized, you know what? You know, I have an opportunity here and I'm not going to pass it up. And every day, you know, I went to that wrestling room and a month before the Olympics, I got beat in Russia. Why? Because I got cocky and arrogant. And I came off the mat after losing that match a month before the Olympics and I put it all out there and I came back and I trained for that next month and when we got to Australia we were ready and we were focused and you know people were like you can't win you can't win a medal you know you don't have a chance Kafari was the only medal chance we had and the coaches sat down and they believed in us and I remember making it all the way to the finals and here I am wrestling and Dan and Steve Frazier are sitting there and they're on both sides of me and, and I'm sitting there nervous and I put my mouthpiece in because my game face is on, I'm ready to go and, and Dan and Steve are sitting there saying, Roland, look at him, you know, Corellin's nervous, you can beat him. I'm like, you know, you can beat him, honestly, you can beat him. And I had not a, not a clue in my life that I really had a chance to beat him. And I remember right before the match, you know, kind of the godfather of, of I think, wrestling is, you know, Dan Gable, you know, Dan you know, came up and said, Rulu, I want to talk to him. Like, yes, Father, you know. And, and, and he's like, hey, you, you've been saying some stuff that I really don't agree with. I'm like, oh, crap. I'm like, I'm calling the freestyle wrestlers ankle biters, and he's now bringing this up right before we go out. And he's like, hey, he said, you've been giving him too much credit. You're telling people that he can beat you. I said, no, I'm letting people know that I'm not a threat. Because if he's ready for me, he'll be ready. He'll be ready for the challenge, so I'm letting everybody know that I'm like a, you know, caged kitten. I'm nothing of any harm. But when the opportunity arrives, and we went out of the match, and you know, the referee blew the whistle. It was time to go. And right before we went out, I remember talking to Chandler and Fraser, and they're telling me I could beat them. I, I said, kind of, please, you know, let me let me focus, because every day I went to practice, I imagined wrestling Corella, and I imagined he was the one person that I wanted to beat every day. So every day in practice, I beat and I wanted to beat the best. And I remember walking out to that match, 100% focused, not thinking I had a reality to, to, and a chance to win the match. And as we went through the match, it was amazing. It was a miracle. I had no idea. You know, the great coaches and the great people around helped 
you know, America, because I feel so blessed that I even got the opportunity to wrestle there, and then ultimately to win. I remember running off the mat, and Dan, we're running next to each other, and I said to Dan, I'm like, what happened? He goes, I have no idea. And, um, we had not a clue in the world. You know, I'm like, uh, you know, and I still don't. I'm still like dumbfounded that, you know, I, you know, a person from my background could do so many things in the sport of wrestling. And I was, you know, truly blown away. And to have the opportunity to work with Dan and to, you know, work with so many great wrestlers, you know, from, you know, Minnesota, it's just a, it's a, it's a true honor. And um, Jim, you know, when we were at the clinic in California a few years ago, you know, I, I asked for, you know, a workout partner and you said, I'll come out. And I said, no, just like Dan said, you're too small. And you said, no, I'm gonna go with you. So I remember, I'm like, okay, I'll do a souffle. And the reason I don't remember is because I threw you and pancaked you and we had to use the spatula to pick you up, so. But uh, no, you know, there's so many great people and the heritage, you know, Apple Valley, wow. You know, that is, that's truly something special. And I'm from Wyoming, is David Zuniga here? Isn't he? You know, David from Wyoming, I remember watching him in high school. I was a freshman and he was a senior. He was a bad dude. And I, you know, I was blown away. And to be able to come and to see the, you know, the strength of a community and, you know, a state and the opportunity. This is truly something special. I wish 50 of the states, I wish, you know, all these places could have something like this. And, you know, for me to have the opportunity and to be, you know, able to go back and to, you know, come back through the frostbite in 2002 and come back and, you know, win the world championships in 01, come back to beat buyers to make, you know, the Olympic team in 2004 and to ultimately win the bronze medal and retire and to put a few pounds on between then and the biggest loser. You know, last year, Leroy said, hey, you know, you need to look at yourself in the mirror. You need to make some changes, you know, and my sister, the cardiologist said, Ruin, you know, you put on so much weight, you're going to be dead within 10 years, you know, and you need to, you know, take some responsibility. And I'm like, ah, I'm strong, I, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not unhealthy. And I finally looked in the mirror, and it was a wrestling community that got me to open my eyes. And I finally said, you know what, you know, I'm going to open my eyes, and I'm going to go try out for the biggest loser. Got on the show, and what was so fun is during the middle of that season, it was fun because training with Bob and Jillian and Brett and Kara, you know, Bob, he's like, man. He says, there's not, you know, he even told me, he says, there's not one thing in this world you cannot do. He said, you are amazing. You are, this, you are the person that I've been waiting my whole life for, is to train you. He said, you can do anything. I said, thanks, Bob. He said, Ruin, when I grow up, I want to be you. He said, because you can do anything. He said, that is something that's truly special. And when I left The Biggest Loser, I thought, what am I going to do, you know? Come back, you know, just lose a few pounds and just be healthy. I'm like, you know what? I got an opportunity, you know, I just turned 40 years old last month, and when I came off the show, I thought, you know what, I want to truly go out and do something special, and I started training, and, um, you know, now, you know, Dan talked about it tonight, you know, maybe where the shortcomings in Greco are, and what people aren't doing, you know what, you can't talk about it, you can't hope for it, you can't want it, you actually have to do it, and for me, I've been back, I've been training nonstop since I left the show, I've gotten strong now, a little too big, so I'm back to cutting weight again so I can be big, strong, and come in, and I have to have the opportunity to beat Byers, the guy that took my spot seven years ago, 28-2 against him. You know, a month after The Biggest Loser, I came back and went scoreless with him after seven years of not wrestling, and I had the opportunity to wrestle with Dan today. How am I looking, Dan? Good and big. Thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> I was hoping, no, but you know what? You know, I'm going to make a run at the Olympics next year. And people think I'm crazy. People think I'm nuts. But you know what? I think you have an opportunity. I think if you can believe in yourself, you know, the sport of wrestling, and Mike, wow, you know, the history of the sport of wrestling, we all sit back. And I remember being in Athens in 04, just being like, you know what? I'm truly blessed just to be on this stage. You know, Greco Roman wrestling from the Greeks and the Romans, that is a true honor. And you high school kids, you college kids, you know what? See what that next level is like. You know what? You get good in high school and college, truly become great. You know, become a Olympic gold medalist. I think America, there are many left, there are many medals that are left on the podium. And I'm sick and tired of losing to Russia. You know, I think we need to take an opportunity to go out there and kick their butts and show them how strong we are. You know, I think America, we have so much more to prove. Let's do this together. I think Minnesota, you guys are have been the leaders, you guys are gonna be the leaders in the future. You know what? 
You know, there's nothing you young kids can't do. There's nothing and there's nowhere you can't go because the wrestling will give you the opportunity, it'll give you the strength, it'll give you the character to survive 18 hours at 25 below zero. You know, a plane wreck, you know, and talking about me swimming, um, you know, I swam two miles of 43 degree water at Lake Powell. It took me two hours, I wasn't very quick, but I got there. And that was another situation where it comes down to heart. And wrestling is probably, I think, in my life, and I think ultimately in the world, the sport. And you talk to a lot of Navy SEALs and Marines and everybody else, and they say wrestling is the sport that made me who I am today. Without that sport, I wouldn't be anything than what I am. So for me, the sport of wrestling has done that. And to be able to be you know, honored here tonight, thank you so much to be part of this family. And Alan, thank you for supporting the sport and for being leaders. And I think we have so many more things to do. And next year, I think in the Olympics, you know, I think America has the opportunity to win medals next year. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough. We have to be honest and we have to be truthful. But we have to be willing to go out and fight, sweat, and basically do whatever it takes. And I think that is dedication 100%. And each and every one of us, we can do anything if we put our minds to it. Thank you very much. It's, it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ruin Gardner, now in the Hall of Fame. Well deserved. It's, congratulations.